I'm Steph Hansen, faculty at Iowa State University. And I'm Mary Janowski, faculty at the University of Nebraska. When we started our faculty positions, we quickly realized how important mentoring can be to the success of our graduate students and our programs. Using the principles of community, communication, and curiosity, we'll give you actionable tips to become a better graduate student mentor based on what we've learned during our mentoring journey. We've We've made the mistakes. So you don't have to, because mentoring matters. Hello, mentors, and welcome to the Mentoring Matters podcast. Welcome to another week, Mary. So what's been going on with your team this week? Well, uh, the Western section of the Animal Science Society has uh, moved their meeting to October with the hopes that we're going to be able to be in person. And boy, are the kids excited. I know. uh, We don't normally go to this meeting either. We're in the Midwest section for our Animal Science Society, and we typically go to that meeting, which we did virtually. Uh, but they were super pumped to go to an in-person meeting. And so I told them uh, we would all just road trip out to Fort Collins and go to Colorado. And uh, they are talking about how to get data together for abstracts. They're making plans for a hiking trip to the Rocky Mountain National Park for the, the weekend after. And we're very excited. Yeah, I was I was just really impressed because I, I told a couple of my students, you know, I'd be happy to take them even if they don't have abstracts. And yet, Uh, The next meeting we had, they were talking about how they were planning uh, to be able to have an abstract ready to go. And they're like, oh, yeah, I think I can make this happen. And and it does seem like they're just so excited to be able to go to a meeting, network with people, talk about their research in person. And then, yes, of course, it doesn't hurt that it's in Fort Fort Collins where um, there's that opportunity Uh, to get outdoors because a lot of my students also like to go hiking, as you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty pumped. So uh, our question of the week, Steph, is how do you build community within your team? (laughs) It's another people management question and something else that we're actually not trained on as faculty members, which is starting to feel like a theme here. Um, And actually, I think you have a really great place to start us out with this conversation. So why don't you kick us off? Well, uh, you know, it does start in the interview for me. And in fact, I just interviewed a student um, just yesterday. And I always make an effort to talk about teamwork and that we are truly a team environment here and that, that we really don't have the ability to function if we have bad attitudes or people who are not going to be able to contribute to the team. And in fact, I talk a lot about the various teams we work in, about how important it is for everybody to contribute for the good of the group as a whole. And then I also just tell them, quite frankly, that um, if, if they don't really enjoy working in a team, then coming and working as a part of my team is probably not going to be the best fit for them. There are places and there are programs where, you know, you do more individual type work, uh, but we really can't be successful with the type of work we do uh, unless we work as a team. You know, Steph, I've noticed that uh, talking with you and also, you know, working with your group sometimes on, on common projects that your team works extremely well together. So why don't you talk a little bit about how you kind of build your team? Yeah, well, I appreciate that. I've been lucky to have a lot of really great students working with me over the years. Um, My philosophy is that I want to try to make myself as obsolete as possible. You know, when I first got started as a faculty member, I was out there elbow to elbow with the students at the farm, you know, working cattle and doing everything else in the, in the lab for the research. And, you know, over the years, you know, we just, we don't have time for that. We have to be right in class. We have to be writing grants and doing other things, but more importantly, we want to train those students with those skills. And then they train the next generation of students with those skills. So we work very hard to make sure that everybody knows how to do everything. So nobody's really just a specialist only on one um, kind of activity. And that is so useful because if somebody has an emergency or God forbid, somebody wants to go on vacation, 
we don't have to grind the program to a halt and wait for them to come back, right? We can keep on keeping on with the program because everybody knows how to do all of the tasks. You know, Steph, uh, I was just thinking about, I don't know, I think it was about two years ago when I had not been working in the area of minerals and I had a producer who was having a problem and we needed uh, to do some liver biopsies. And so my students weren't trained on that. And I asked if you could help me out and you sent some of your students to meet with me and and help that producer uh, get the samples that they needed. And I just remember thinking the whole time I was pretty much obsolete because the the three girls that came, um, they they basically took care of everything. And the whole time I'm just staying there talking to the producer, uh, I didn't even really need to be there. Uh, They were so on top of it. And it was just so fun to watch. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, isn't it? When you can just stand back and and think, yeah, I helped create that. And, you know, it's just so great to see them grow and and become so competent on those things. I actually, um, I'm really passionate about this topic, actually, because I feel like it's so important that everybody learns these skills so that I can do things like go on vacation, right? So I feel really comfortable being able to be gone for a while and knowing that, you know, the postdoc or the senior PhD students in the lab are going to be completely comfortable and competent to do stuff while I'm gone. And I actually remember one time um, standing on a trail, I think we were hiking together in Medicine Bow in Wyoming, and we were trying to find a cell signal because my farm manager was trying to reach me so that I could um, uh, say whether or not we were okay to buy this one group of cattle. And my grad student who was back here was like, I don't know. Do you think it's right? Do you think it's okay? And I was like, I don't know. I'm losing you, Olivia. Make a good decision. (laughs) And she did. She did great. Um, But, you know, we'd built that confidence in her beforehand, right? So she was fine. Yeah. So it's so great when you see that they don't need you like every minute of the day and they can be just fine without you. And I know that one of the things that you focus on in your program, Mary, is helping students understand the value of being a part of that team that you said was so important for your group. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, of course, part of that is that my students are are part of multiple teams, and some of that's the interdisciplinary work that we do. And I really do concentrate on trying to help the students see the value in working with others, especially others that are doing work that's not similar to them, because there's so much they can learn. Um, it's a great way for them to expand their CV. Uh, And I think that's really helpful. I really do spend a lot of time, about once a semester, we go and take a look at their CV. We talk about things um, that they could put on their skills that they've learned um, to get some more breadth. And then I also talk to them a lot about how it's a very, very small world. Um, There's a high likelihood that the people um, that are in the group that they work with right now are going to be their colleagues. So... I do think that uh, they need to remember that those relationships they're building now will be important uh, for the future. I mean, just think about you and I. Uh, We're in two different areas in terms of where we research, but we still have that connection and we still actually help each other out tremendously. So, Steph, as you think about your team and and how you make them successful. One of the things that I think has been really interesting is all the things you do to help make your team more productive and how to build team morale. I mean, your students really do seem very happy most of the time, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm sure there's some actual saying, but, you know, basically a happy team is a productive team, right? So, you know, I care about them as as people. I want them to be happy and, you know, have that good work-life balance. And one of the things that we try to do to encourage that is to bring some activities in for the group um, that are, like, just like you said, basically morale boosters. So what can we do to make that team feel closer and sometimes to reward strong performances? Um, So one of my favorite things to do is something that we're finally getting to do more of now that the weather is improving. Um, And that is actually just spending an afternoon outside with the group. So right now I have um, five graduate students and a postdoc, and we will just kind of last minute, because it depends on the weather, we'll just sort of send a, a text chain around or send an email out and say, hey, would anybody like to meet at the park and go for a hike for a few miles or, or go for a walk someplace. 
Um, we did this a few weeks ago. It ended up being a little snowier hike than we intended, <laughs> um, but we had a lot of fun on it. And, uh, you know, anybody who had dogs brought their dogs along for the hike. And, you know, sometimes we talk about science and we talk about the work when we're on that. And, and sometimes we don't. We talk about the weather and we talk about classes and whatever else is going on in everybody's minds. So that's been been really useful. And we feel really rejuvenated and, and closer at the end. Um, the other informal thing that can be really useful can be like a, a conference. And so maybe the group has worked really hard to put a great presentation together and taking them out for dinner or maybe buying the first round of drinks, if that's appropriate, um, at, at the afternoon um, when the conference is over. That's a great way to celebrate those successes. What about you? What are some things that you've done with your group? Well, you know, I think your your comment about going and doing these kind of informal activities um, is, I guess I would say some people may consider that to be a, not a good use of your time and your team's time, right? That uh, you're not working. And so clearly, <laughs> clearly, you know, that's not a good use of your time. And I do think that there is, it's really important to help the group see the kind of that shared humanity. So get to know each other and get to know you because then they feel more comfortable talking to you about things. And there's so much that you don't realize is happening because, you know, you, you don't know unless they tell you. So one of the cool things was just uh, last week, I was meeting with one of my students and we were actually just having a little picnic lunch. Um, kind of an informal uh, discussion. And I didn't have any agenda. We just got together for lunch and, and we were sitting there talking about things. And another student came up uh, from a different group and they started talking about uh, what they had been doing earlier in the day, which I had no clue that she was helping that student uh, get her project going out in the field. And they were discussing plans for after lunch and those types of things. And it was just exciting to me because I was just thinking about how much they're doing in terms of teamwork that I don't even know about, right? So there's all of these learning opportunities and they're taking advantage of it. And to me, that's really, really exciting. The one thing that I think is really important is to let them know that you really appreciate it when you see that teamwork happening, because that just reinforces that you value them spending time doing those things. I also realized that uh, for me, I don't do as many of the pre-planned morale boosting opportunities like you do, and I'd like to get into some of those in the future. So how about you tell us a little bit about some of the things that you do that you plan in advance? Well, so you and I travel together a lot, right, on some of our national park adventures and things like that. And um, I think we've both come to acknowledge that one of the best parts about that trip is the planning. And basically, you don't do any of the planning. You just split the bills with me and I do all the planning, which is great because I'm super type A. So I love to do the planning. Um, but I love to go look up the places we're going to go and be able to anticipate that, right? When we have, say, um, a writing challenge like we talked about in our last podcast or some other you know, challenge that I've set for the group and they, they are looking really good to meet that, we start to brainstorm ideas like, what do you guys want? You know, if, we could, if I could pay for something, what, what would it be? So one example has been um, we've actually gone to the Henry Dorley Zoo in Omaha and we actually got to be behind the scenes, take a, um, a tour with the nutritionist there, you know, do thing, fun things like feed a giraffe by hand. And of course, my group is nutrition focused, so that was really uh, special for them. But it's nice because we road trip together, we get that car time, we spend that whole informal day together and, you know, it's just something to look forward to. And I would absolutely say that is not a waste of time. That is precious time to have with that group. And that is going to make them closer, closer to me. And I think that the more you build that kind of, not completely family, right, but something maybe akin to that, everybody just wants to help each other. They want to help the other one succeed. So they're not going to mind when they're sampling in the barn at eight o'clock at night, right? Because they're there with their buddies and it's fine, right? Somebody's ordering pizza and somebody else is sampling and it's all good. Yeah. You know, you're talking about the being able to 
even get to talk on the trip. And that's something I very much miss about uh, the time pre-COVID, I guess I would say, because right now we're not allowed uh, to ride together in vehicles. So at tomorrow, I have to drive across the state of Nebraska uh, for six hours. And both of my students also have to drive those six hours because we all have to ride separately. And I really miss that opportunity for everybody to just hop in the car together and be able to talk. That conversation that is very informal, we get to know each other on a more personal level and we get that more shared humanity. I do think that's huge for building that cohesiveness of the team. But at the end of the day, we're more close and uh, everybody is more invested in each other's success. I also think along those same lines, um, I'm not extension, so I'm not in the car quite as much with the students as you might get the opportunity to, but we still go do some producer meetings now and then. And I feel like I learned so much about what that student's career goals are, especially during that time. The other thing is sometimes they'll say something and you can kind of just poke at it a little bit and in a good way and be like, well, tell me more about that. And you realize, oh man, I need to give this kid a different experience like because that's what they want to do. Or you realize that maybe there's a problem buzzing in the lab that maybe you're not aware of, and you can get ahead of it and try to nip that in the bud before it gets out of control. Totally. Sometimes, uh, too, those problems are something that you can easily fix. Like, you realize after talking to them that if you just bought one forty dollars flask, that you could <laughs> double productivity in the lab. And it's like, why didn't somebody tell me this? We could totally do that, right? So I, I really do think those times are very valuable. I also, I want you to talk a little bit about um, another kind of team building activity that you've done, because I think it's really interesting. It was called My Life in a Paper Bag. And when you talked about how you made that happen and the result, I was just, I just thought, wow, that's really cool. So you want to talk about that? Yeah, so this is something that we did in my Project Learn group, and I'm actually really excited that my mentor for Project Learn has agreed to let us interview her on one of these podcasts one of these days, so we can look forward to that. But in our Learn group, we had done this example, and I wanted to bring it to my group. So my life in a paper bag is basically I told the students a week ahead of time at our next grad meeting, and we were virtual, I was like, I need you to either have a physical paper bag or a virtual paper bag. And you put five items in there in the bag. And each item is selected to represent some important piece of their life. It could be something from family or a favorite hobby or a passion, a life philosophy. They're just told that they need to bring it. And I told them they only had to share two things so they could be as personal as they wanted in the rest of it. We weren't going to expect them to share more than two. And then when we came to the group, and I had bag too, when we came to the virtual meeting, um, I took a volunteer to see who wanted to go first to share one thing. And so somebody would draw it out of their paper bag and be like, this is my whatever, and this is the reason why it was important. And you know, this was a group that almost everybody had already been together for anywhere from three to five years. And we only had one person who had been with us less than a year. And I should have known some of these things about these students, but I learned so much in that hour together. And I remember being like really moved by it, actually, because there were so many of them that were like really personal things that they talked about um, or, or even just, you know, how they were all talking about stress baking at the time, right? Because it was kind of in the peak of COVID. And so somebody had like a spatula and somebody had something else and they were like, yes, another stress baker. And it was actually, it was really cool. It was before our secret Santa, which is another thing that we do within our group. And um, so the person who drew out of their bag, they said something and I was like, oh my God, you're totally getting an apron for Christmas because that was like what she had hinted at for something. And so it was so perfect to follow up with that. And actually everybody shared everything from their bags and they totally didn't have to. But I just loved how much we learned about students that, you know, had even been with us already for a long time. I think, you know, it's really important that students understand that's a safe space for them to want to be able to be willing to share some things like that. I wouldn't recommend the activity if you just have a, like a brand new team or like a new brand new student because it's pretty intimate exercise. But it, I think it just worked really well once this group had kind of been together for a while. So we've talked about some things that have worked for us. Is there anything that you've learned about or seen someplace else that you think you'd like to try, but maybe you haven't gotten a chance to yet? Yeah. So I follow this chemistry professor on Twitter. Uh, 
she does this thing with her team where they do lab awards, which I think is really interesting. And they have a, a series of awards and the team members actually vote on who's going to get the awards. I think she gets kind of a final say, but the team is the ones who pick who's going to get awarded for what. And I just really think that's cool because that gives an opportunity for the the team actually to provide positive feedback to individuals within the team. I haven't done it yet because I realize that it's going to take a lot of planning to be done well so I don't cause uh, any strife or competition in the group. But I do think that it's it's really cool when you can get more than just me telling them when they're doing a good job, when their other group members can be talking to them about how they're doing a good job or something by voting for them for a certain award. I really think that could help build more camaraderie and uh, morale. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I love that idea. And I totally appreciate that you haven't jumped into it quite yet without doing kind of the thinking about what your purpose would be and how you would sort of try to mitigate some of those concerns with competition and stuff. So, and I think, you know, that's the thing about trying to be a good mentor, right? Is you, you find an idea, you got to do some thinking about it first and think about what your purpose is and do your best that you can to try to make it go as smooth as possible, but also recognizing that sometimes we just epically fail and then we just fix it or we move on, right? I think for me, one of the things that I would really like to try is actually hosting a writing retreat. So I'm all about writing this semester. So this has kind of been on my mind lately. And it could be something like just a Saturday power writing session where we're all together locally. um, And then we all go out to maybe go bowling or do something together to celebrate the day's successes. Or um, I'd even like to do something where we go to like a lake house or something like that. Uh, maybe for like a three-day weekend and everybody has you know pretty aggressive writing goals associated with that and then we balance it with you know fishing or biking or hiking or whatever else we're going to do that would be really fun that the group wants to do. Yeah I think that sounds actually really exciting. I think there could be a lot of good productivity and team building that could happen in a retreat like that. So what else do you think we missed? So the only other thing that I've been been thinking about. I've been trying to do this more lately um, and I need to get uh, more consistent with it. I like this idea of sending out an email to the team every time somebody does something big. So if somebody gets a job, accepts a job offer, somebody publishes a paper, especially their first paper, like that's rah, rah, that's pretty awesome. Passes prelims, you know, passes their defense. Like everybody in the group knows that this stuff has happened, but the fact that you take the time to send an email and be like, man, I just want to say how proud we are of so-and-so for this accomplishment and um, how much they're going to be missed or something like that. You know, I think, I think that just helps them even up their game even more to make sure like, you know, their paper's the next one that we get to send an email out about. Yeah. So teamwork makes the dream work. I do think that <laughs> it's important that uh, when you do praise success, you also think about how you can praise those who contributed to that success. Um, so nothing in, in, at least in my group, nothing gets done in a vacuum. And there are a lot of people who ultimately contributed to making any success happen. And so I do think the praise part of it can be great. And I also think any time that you can reemphasize how important teamwork is, you can actually make that team even stronger. I think that is a great suggestion for something to add to that thought about the email where you would have a piece on there that would be like, you know, congratulations to so-and-so for um, getting a new paper published. And thanks to all of the members of the lab who contributed to development of the science. Maybe they were part of the preliminary data that got the grant funded. There could be all kinds of things there. So I think that's an awesome idea. Especially if there's an individual who really took it upon themselves to contribute uh, very strongly to that success. And it might be that they were that go-to person who showed up every time the other individual had to sample, right? So it may not be something that really contributed to the science or the writing, but if they weren't there, it wouldn't have happened. And so even if they're not on the paper, I think, you know, uh, being able to recognize their contribution is important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us today. We'd love to hear from you. Our show will be on YouTube and the link will be in the show notes. 
Use the comment section to tell us your thoughts on the question of the week so we and others can learn from you. And just as a reminder, the question this week was, how do you build community within your team? Thanks, and we will see you next time. Oh,